Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adam. If you love luxury fashion, then you're definitely gonna love my channel. So make sure you like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram below for all of the latest updates. And today, let's get right into it. So in today's video, we're actually going to the Menendez Brothers Mansion. Now, I'm sure we are all familiar with the new Netflix show, The Menendez Brothers, and the documentaries on HBO and Netflix, even the trial here on YouTube. While I was in the area, I figured why not go to the actual Menendez Brothers Mansion and see what it's like. So without any further ado, let's get in the car and head to Beverly Hills. We are currently in Beverly Hills and I will be showing you the surrounding area while we go to the Menendez Brothers Mansion. Now, Beverly Hills, I actually really do love it here. It's just so peaceful and just so quiet. The grass really is greener. Usually the sky is more bluer as well. However, it is a very dark and cloudy day today. It was actually almost going to rain, but I thought that was actually really cool for all of the cool vlogs I will be filming today. Today is the Mendez Brothers house and Michael Myers house, which is coming in the future. But you know, I love to show you guys the surrounding areas because we are only two minutes away from the mansion. So we get to see the nice quaint neighborhood and simply a really nice moment of how they get there. Everyone, I am here in Beverly Hills and I am going to the one and only Mendez brothers house now in all honesty I wasn't sure if I wanted to really talk about this topic but after watching all of the footage from both the trial and the actual show and all three documentaries well four documentaries recently in all honesty the second trial I do very disagree with but um, I will get into it a little bit more in the video but first let's see the surrounding area so the surrounding area around the street very cute, very quiet. It is Beverly Hills, so it is very, very nice and everything like that. But over here, we can see that there is actually like a line and like a TMZ tour bus. Everyone is kind of over there with the tour bus. Because of the tour bus and everyone there, I did decide to just give it a minute and I wanted to walk around the block. When I was walking around the block, I actually realized that there is an alleyway behind the house. So we will be going to see that in just a moment. However, again, it's just such a nice, peaceful area. Very, very quiet. Like the fact that somebody could honestly do that is really surprising, especially because this is a neighborhood where you can, you know, walk with your cute little Prada shoes and your amazing cute little Prada bag. And it's totally fine. You don't have to worry about anything. But again, like the fact that the neighbors didn't even hear any sounds in the middle of the night, it's just so weird. I will say that the second trial is very misjudged. They had no witnesses, no family testimonies, and they didn't even use manslaughter as a case. So manslaughter you would get like 15 years for, but because the jury couldn't decide if it was manslaughter, first degree murder, or no crime at all, they had to declare a mistrial. And the bad thing about that is it was never a question of did they do it or did they not do it. They admitted to do it. The real question is, is it first degree murder or is it manslaughter? I will get into it more after the video, but the second judge on the second trial just really hated them because of Rodney King, OJ Simpson, the LA courts really had to prove their point. So they didn't even give them a choice of manslaughter. It was first degree murder for like full life in jail or no crime at all, which of course we all know, no crime at all isn't even an option for them because they confessed. So again, such a messed up trial, but the alleyway right here, you can see that the neighbor does have this giant fence and I was gonna continue going down, but then I got like a weird feeling. I was like, well, if that could happen here, I guess like anything could happen here. So I did actually come back because I do meet a friend and we actually come check out the alleyway together. I did not record it because there actually was nothing to shoot. It was just a giant fence like you just seen at the neighbors. But now I am actually gonna be going back and let's hopefully everyone's gone so we can get a good look at the house. I did actually see a police car turn. So that was weird. I think that line, it was just so long that um, maybe they came because the neighbor was like, yo. But then again, somebody's car was actually getting towed. So the road was blocked. So there was a long line, not just for the house, but yeah, you know, for the neighbors. I wonder how the neighbors feel about it. They're probably not too pleased, but wow. You know, see how gorgeous this is? Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Love it. Who would have thought that Elm Street would be so beautiful when in reality it is a nightmare on Elm Street? With everyone gone, we are finally on the actual block of the house 
and the neighbors were actually out. So I actually passed the house and I had to talk to the neighbors. And I was like, is it okay if I like post this? And like, did you guys mind at all? They're actually really sweet. They didn't mind. They were like, yeah, go ahead for it. But it's so cute because their house is kind of like just alike as like the Menendez brothers house. And it's just so cute and so gorgeous, the driveways and everything like that. Now they did not really comment on the Menendez brothers house, but they did say that it has been packed and hopefully it won't continue to be so packed after like a year from now. But now we're at the actual Menendez house. And wow, look at that. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little, it's a wee bit smaller in person. Let's see if we can see in here any of it. Very interesting. Crazy to think that that happened there, right across the street. Across the street, again, so beautiful, but I'm so surprised that nobody heard and nobody called the cops. Now, I will say that the top window in the very middle does kind of give me like a weird feeling, but overall, it was kind of like a peaceful vibe being there. It is a beautiful home. I think it's like $17 million. But in all honesty, I think it should be $7 million, But with everything that happened, maybe even like $4.5 million because of like the bad juju. Now again, the top window in the middle is the only thing that gives me like a weird feeling. But it is kind of just like an all around surreal moment being here because you know, I just watched a Netflix show. We just watched all the documentaries and being here on like the actual driveway, it's so surreal. Like this is where they parked their car, walked into the door. I'm standing exactly where they stood and it is just so surreal. Luckily for the landscape, I do think that their privacy hedge is so great. Like this is such a good hedge, I am not even gonna lie. The neighbors also have one as well, but they decorated for Halloween and this is so cute. I love all of the skeletons coming out of here and it really adds to like the moment of the vibes here too. While I was at the house, I actually did meet somebody there and we were gonna give him the name T. So I did meet T and then he actually took this picture of me and then I took a couple of him and it was so funny because I thought he was coming up to me to kind of like yell about filming but then he started filming so then we both started laughing because like we felt awkward around each other but then we had so much in common and we actually spent the entire day together after this so it turns out that my new friend never has been to Rodeo so I was like well let me show you around there were so many cute stores like Prada, Gucci, and Versace that we do end up going to even Hermes actually and in Versace I did make him try on a suit and he's never tried anything on like this before so it was so cute because he was so nervous to try everything on and I was like just try it on it's totally fine even if it's just for a photo so he tried on a lot and it was actually so cute on him like honestly such a superstar I did find the cutest little card holder wallet which I actually do end up getting this is honestly just so incredible and it's technically on sale right now for only $2.50 instead of $5.50 so it's so perfect and honestly I really do recommend this we also go to YSL and I try on some beautiful fur coats as well now this one was worth ten thousand dollars and this is a real shearling coat and i just love it so much of course we go to gucci because gucci is his favorite i actually have an entire gucci vlog coming out soon so definitely stay tuned for that because we will see a lot of great pieces in my future vlog I did even convince him to try on a couple gucci suits this is one of them this is my personal favorite honestly this was just such a winner after we did go to chiffon she and we had a glass of champagne at what's known as like the instagram spot and it was such a beautiful view. We did take some really cute photos as well and just really enjoyed the moment. Then later that night, I did actually go on a date. My date actually did have the Menendez Brothers baseball card. So this is technically worth like so much money now from like Mark Jackson. And this is so cool because if you zoom in, you see the Menendez Brothers right in the back there so it was just like what a coincidence i just filmed the vlog i met my friend who was obsessed with it i was like oh my god how crazy is that so the neighborhood in the actual house like we seen it was absolutely beautiful nice peaceful and quiet area the alley was a little bit like sketchy and I am happy that I did go back with my friend afterwards because there was actually like three people there. And again, I tried to actually film the backyard but I couldn't film anything because it was just a giant black fence. Even if I stood on my friend's shoulders, I still wouldn't even be able to see over the fence. So it was a losing battle. 
However, when it comes to the trial, I do kind of want to break it down just a little bit more because here is the thing. During the first trial, it was manslaughter, first degree murder, or no crime at all. Manslaughter is still murdering somebody, but you had intentions of protecting yourselves. There was some type of circumstance that doesn't just make it like intent and that like you're like such like a bad person and you did it on purpose. There's some form of self-defense in it. First degree murder is just like, yes, you're a super bad person, super evil, super bad, you did it, have no remorse, and that's that. Now, manslaughter, you would only get 15 to 25 years for, and then you're out of jail. First degree murder is life in jail, no parole. And of course we know no crime at all means no crime at all, which didn't apply here because they even admitted that yes, they did do it. So it really just questions, was it manslaughter or was it first degree or second degree murder? Now, second degree murder, if I'm not confusing it with the first, is yes, you still get like 50 years, but you do have the option of parole as well after like 50 years or something like that. But like, definitely correct me down in the comments below if I am mistaken. But overall, I think we can all agree that the first trial, they should have gotten manslaughter. They would have been out by now. Because they went to a second trial, because the jury couldn't decide on the first one, they declared a mistrial. During the second trial, that judge is just so biased. And honestly, I do kind of feel like that judge was a little homophobic because just of how he responded to everything. He even said that like men could not be abused, so the whole abuse case was completely out the window, and he only changed it to first degree murder or no crime at all. And of course we all know no crime at all didn't apply. So the only choice that they really had was first degree murder or just to let them off. And during that time, they just lost the OJ Simpson trial. And I'm not too sure about it, but something happened with somebody named Rodney King. I believe he was beaten by the police, if I am not mistaken. But the LA courts had a lot of cleaning up to do. Everybody did not rely on the LA court. They thought it was an awful court system with no justice. So they really had to like lay the hammer down on the Menendez brothers. So before they even stepped foot in there, that judge who one personally hated them and two also the attorney that helped them, I did forget her name. We all know her from the show and the documentary. That judge would not even like let her speak. He clearly did not even want like a woman in that courtroom. So honestly, the second trial is just so misjudged and honestly, personally offends me as well. Because again, there's just so many things that didn't apply. They didn't even have any of the witnesses in the second trial. In the first one, they had actual family members coming onto the stand and saying that like, yes, Lyle and Eric did hand me notes. They did tell me about the abuse. And during the second trial, none of that was even allowed. There wasn't even any cameras allowed, which made it like more of like a stern and like serious situation. Altogether, when it comes to me, my personal opinion is, yes, they should have gotten manslaughter during the first trial. They would have been out by now already. It wouldn't be such a big deal as it is right now currently in the pop culture. Of course, I'm not saying that they did the right thing. You should never harm somebody, even if it is self-defense. If you absolutely have to, okay but the way that they did it, they didn't necessarily have to. So there were so many other possibilities that they could have taken, and I don't agree with the Menendez brothers' decision. However, I do feel like they should be released by now. Another thing is the abuse. Now, I am really good at psychology and body language, and it kind of takes one to know one, and I could look at Eric during that trial, and during some situations and certain topics, his body language was so uncomfortable you could definitely tell that yes, their story was true. I truly do believe their story. I can see it clear as day. Even now with that band that the dad was like responsible for, even one of the band members said that he was abused as well by the same man. So there's just so much evidence that you really can't deny that fact. However, when I was there, I did meet a lot of people and I did question a lot of people on the actual subject. So the majority of people did agree that they should be released by now, that they were abused and they feel bad for them. However, it was always people like my age and under. However, I did talk to some people who were maybe like 45, 50, 60 and higher up there. I talked to a lot of people at the table and there's this one guy at the table and he actually chimed in and said that he actually knew the dad, Jose, and the dad was an awful person, but he didn't believe that he abused anybody. Now that, I was so shocked to hear that because again, like all of the older men said that the abuse was not a thing, but being in West Hollywood and seeing who these men are dating, it's like, well, you probably don't 
agree with the abuse because you're kind of doing it. You know when there's just like a huge age gap that it's like, okay, well, if you're like 60 or 70 and you're dating a 20 year old, well, then how can you, you know, like not agree with like the 20 year old saying that like they're like a victim and things happened. So I was definitely very shocked. But again, like all of the older people don't agree with the abuse. I personally think mainly because it was just like the generation and the time like it just didn't happen to men and if it did happen people didn't talk about it and pretended it didn't happen and as sad as it is to say I feel like now this is just my speculation I feel like the guy that I met and the judge and everyone maybe it happened to them so if they just completely like threw it off the table to like try to avoid it like it brought something up in them so they're very defensive about it like no abuse did not happen but that's just my opinion because again, it takes one to know one. And from my experiences, I can definitely tell a bad person from a good person. And all of the older people were given like kind of bad people vibes where the younger people were more understanding and agreed that, yeah, the brother should be free by now. And then lastly, it's the insurance policy. People said that they were doing it for the insurance money. If they waited two weeks to pull the actual trigger, they would have gotten their insurance money. But because they did it two weeks before the insurance was even kicked in, it wasn't even like a thing. So if that's truly what they were after, they would have just waited two weeks to do it. So I don't agree with their insurance money claim, but definitely comment down below. What do you think about this case? Because there's so many like different variants and different perspectives and just so many other things I could go into play here. But definitely comment down below. Tell me what you think about the house tour and the trial. And I'm very curious to hear your opinions below. So again, thank you so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. I have a lot more luxury fashion videos and a lot of travel videos as well. So definitely stay tuned for those. And thanks again so much for watching. I do appreciate it and you and have a great day. Au revoir.